Hello again, fans and friends of Bob's Barn Workshop. Well, we've got another little emergency repair here today. Uh, a week or so ago, my wife was trying to put the garage door down. There was something under the corner of it. The door jammed. We tried to put it up. I messed with it. The chain was off the gear. And uh, I put the chain back on and tensioned it back up and started to run it. And the gear snapped right off the top of the motor drive unit. So this uh, old Craftsman, I think it is, Sears opener has to come down and a new kit has arrived. So we will be assembling the new opener and uh, putting that up today, taking down the old one. I guess probably the first thing to do is just take the old one down. Uh, I'm hoping that the bracketry hanging on the ceiling here will suffice. So, all right, let me turn this off. I'll go find my tripod and we'll get this thing taken apart. First thing I got to do, get this door back down. I don't think I'm going to have to replace this uh, draw bar here. We had to have the spring replaced a couple years ago. But, uh, as you can see, the chain is hanging loose. I might still use my uh, light here. Let's see if I can unscrew this. That's just one of those light bulb to plug adapters that I screwed into the light socket so I could run my four foot LED garage light and it only draws less than the 60 watt bulb they recommend so I didn't figure it would do no harm. All right, well my whole toolbox is here so I should be golden. So let me, well that's just got a clutch pin. So I can take that clevis pin out, and there's just a clevis pin that holds the rail to the mounting bracket, and so I guess I need to just drop the back first. I'll take that clevis pin out of there first. Let me show you what it looks like. Hopefully it's not too dark in here. This camera auto... Uh, adjusts pretty well. If you look right there at that base plate, you'll see a pin sticking through. And it's just got a ring in a hole. And so you remove the ring and uh, pull the pin out. Well, I got to do the same thing on the draw bar here. This draw bar attaches to the top of the door. This is pretty typical. And there's a pin through there. So I got to release this bracket first and then I got to take the motor down. I just wanted to see what I was doing here because I always stand in your way and I never am up close. <sighs> I think that will just come out by hand. because the one that uh, it's in the barn you may have seen me use that before that was the one that was originally here and I don't even remember why I changed it maybe because we had a bigger door no the door was the same size and uh yeah I'm not going to take this up yet it's all going to come falling down alright so so, my favorite word. Don't worry, I'll be on camera in a second. I ain't forgot ya. I 
I should stop between these things so they're easier to find. All right, so we're looking at the opener now. And it just looks like 7 16 volts. This new door, of course, has all the safety features. So it's going to have the little electric eye across the opening. There's four wires on this one because it has a remote so you can turn the light on. But I think the new opener actually has like an app. So, uh, here, hook that guy up there out of the way. There's this guy. Oh, this one looks like bigger bolts than I thought. Nice and solid though. That's a good mount. It's too bad the chain broke off this. <laughs> yeah, crap happens, as I say. Save the nuts and washers. I'm a hardware whore. Hoard, hoard, hoard. Pull that pin and drop the whole unit. Okay, so we're gonna back you off here a little bit. saving this pin for it, but sometimes these little pieces of hardware can come in handy around the shop. So now we move on to assembling the new unit. It's a little cool today, but I got a sweatshirt on, so I'm doing good. All right, so we are here ready to start. The rail assembly. It's easy enough. I read it off already. need and the ratchet and the K 
carrier. It's kind of a toolless thing, you know. So there's just this little plastic roller. Hopefully this lasts. I just took my knife away. Put it away, of course. Alright, there's supposed to be a hand a hitch pin and a thing in here. A thing and a thing. So that goes. No washers or nothing. It just goes in there without washers. Drops in. Same as the other thing. It has a hairpin clip is what I call them. These little uh, doodads. And then there's a 5 16 nut and bolt. It goes through the next hole. And I bet that's a disturbed thread nut so that it goes on tightly and won't vibrate. I gotta get my half inch wrench in. It isn't disturbed. This is some kind of stop for this. All right, well, that was easy enough. Just put the pulley in, put the stop bolt, and now we slide this beast on. That's the of course the carrier for the that pulls the door up and then we just stick all the rails together you they're oily just like that they just press together Pretty simple. All right, so the next thing, see, so we're just going to be assembling this rail. I wish I had a couple of saw horses to just set them up. I do have some saw horses. Let's just go down and get them. So now we got the assemble assembly put together temporarily for the rail. There's the top gear that goes on the motor. And uh, how many sections? Five sections. And the other end has the pulley and the traveling slider thingy <laughs> that the chain hooks to. All right. Let's see what's next on the agenda. Also a strap, but you got to start over this. Shows it about six inches back. That's probably where it attaches to the top of the motor unit. Wouldn't you think? I would think. Helps brace that. And the gold threaded end has to come up through that end. So we got to root the chain. I'm probably going to get all greasy. Yum yum. Maybe I'll see if I got some rubber gloves. Why do they make rubber gloves size for small, extra small, and mini me? No human being can get them on their hand. At least somebody with hands other than some little foreigner or whatever. I don't know what.
has to go through. There ain't no difference to these. threaded. So I don't want that threaded way on there. We just want to start it. Now we get them coupled together. There we go. Just like that. This is a ball of fun. So that's getting pretty good. And I know exactly what happens. This chain holds everything together taut. Like so. And then this carrier will lock in the middle here. And there you go. Now there's your traveling chain part. Alright, chain's on. Now we gotta mount the motor. The motor. Get saw horses, boys. Makes a lot easier. What ratchet is this half inch? There's the 7 16th nut driver. Maybe that'll work. Because these are just uh, self tappers. Put the first few screws in there, you know. Don't snug them all the way down tight to start with. with the ratchet now. This is a plastic bracket, so I have to be very careful not to smash it. hold out 30 years like the old one did. Is it? Alright. That's easy. Now, now we just jack her up into position, but we got to make sure we put the right bracket up there. 
Quick save to replace this new bracket. Let me get my feet out here. And that new bracket has to go right up in there. You can see it. I think I'm going to put it just in the same spot. So that's just ratcheting and wrenching. I'm just going to get up there and do it. You guys don't need to watch. But I'm just going to be installing this bracket. Well, I've come to the conclusion that the board they have nailed up there has had several different door openers on it, and it's a piece of Swiss cheese, plus it's that genuine simulated wood-like substance. So I'm going to tear it off. We're going to put a good piece of wood up here. screws. I'll be back. There's more. Oh, I want to let's see, is this piece of wood long enough? We'll put it right up there. Run some nice long screws into her. Okay, so I gotta screw that board up. I got a nice piece of two by six. I got my whammer jammer here. It's just treated two by six, so it should be nice and strong. I'm gonna start the screws on this one end. Let them hang over about that far so they don't split. You know, think about that when you go to split. I don't think it's coming down, boys. All right. Now, I remember the destructions. Sorry we missed that. We just had my lovely assistant out here. She helped me hold this up while I put the clevis pin through in the end of the rail. I had the motor sitting on top of the, the sawhorse here, or the stepladder here. And then after I got the clevis pin in, she helped me raise it up and I hooked it right up to the old brackets and we're all good. Now only two of the brackets are going to hold it, but that only has to hold the weight of the opener, not the weight of the door or anything like that. So, These guys are in the wrong place. Maybe I could move it and cut it, put another bracket on there. I don't know. Do I need two brackets? These stupid things are just nailed. <laughs> yeah, put some screws and washers in there. Never had to have it before. All right. Now I got to run these safety switches because they're just little two conductor wires. I got extra angle here too, by the way. 
I got this extra angle, which, which I could, uh, damn, that's sharp, on the face. Falling down in 30 some years, so I guess it's not going to. Oh shoot. I see that I did something I did wrong though, it's not on the gear. So I gotta undo that coupling down there so I can get the chain on this gear. Stop it, watch when I put that together, did I? should be farther, farther apart anyway. Uh, we'll see how it works. Alright, back to the roaring board. I gotta move in some holes in it right there. So it's about 30 degrees it says. Tightening up. I guess it would have helped if I read the instructions. I would say that looks about right. I don't want to go way off there. Does look good to me. Good to you. I'm going to get the right tool. Okay, so, I did it like they told me now. About 30 degrees, don't you think? 20 to 30 degrees? Yep, yep. That's what they want. Not vertical and not more than 30 degrees. I gotta hook the little pulley string on it. This is so you can release it in case you're uh your door uh, gets stuck or your opener doesn't work. So I just tie a knot in them like that. One, one overhand knot, because that will come back up through the hole. And there it is. Cha ching I won't bore you with all the details. Um, you can see I've mounted the sensor down here. I mounted it as low as I could, but I got that cinder block. I didn't want to stick it out in the room that I ran into it all the time. And then you just run a two gauge, a two conductor wire all the way up. And you ran it over to the center beam. And I cut it enough to reach well past the, 
the motor for now because I'm going to staple them both together when I get them. So now I'm going to work on the other side. I have the other sensor over there and it was a pain. But now I just got to get my wire up and over. All right, we'll see how I can do. All right, so the direction, I got my wires run to my sensors. And right down here on the end of the thing, you'll see a terminal strip. Twist the uh, strip and twist the, the light colors together so the striped goes together in terminal one. There's a stripe wire. There you go. And then the uh, plain one goes in terminal two, and then the wires from the Push button on the wall that I'm going to install soon. Going to uh, three and four. So these guys, just a little bit. I might as well just strip them all right now. use the uh, light adapter on this one like I did on the other one and let that big strip turn on instead of just the little bulbs. So there's just a little push button right below the hole. There's just a terminal hole. Push them in you let it spring back. A lot of things are up that way. Speaker connectors on your stereo. Same kind of connection. Okay. Push them up out of the way. Leave a little slack there. And I'm just going to use the same wire to the controller. It's already ran. Right, right. Radio. Spanky. This has got four wires because my other one used to be able to turn the lights on, so that, which was nice actually. I'm going to put another set of connectors on here just in case I don't really need to. I don't really need to. Let me see how it connects to the wall remote. There's white and black and white, so I'm just going to use white and black. White goes to three. Same 
I gotta look at the lens on this, see if it's gonna fit. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, they're open right on the top. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. I'm just going to wrap back for now because they are not used. Man. These terminals are even black and white on this, so can't make too many mistakes. Again, we just push the tab with the screwdriver, set the wire in there, let it grip. To the wall unit. This is the old one. I like this one because you can lock it and do all kinds of stuff with it. This one just has a push button on and off. down here for now. So much cheaper feeling than the old craftsman though. would be even better. I gotta find a Phillips because it's stupid. Dang, ain't working for Chet.
That's an old telephone line that isn't even used next to it. I should just cut it and rip it out, huh? I know where that one went. Once in a while. Alrighty. Now I need my hammer. I think we're nearly done, guys. The long and windy road. All right, it says that we are ready to power the opener. After I install the bulb, of course. I think the cover's off for right now. sure that we don't get our power cord anywhere near that rotating gear assembly. So I'm going to use the tie wrap here that came on the power cord. We just twist it backwards. Who twists this crap backwards? Left-handers? Twist tie, tie wrap, whatever you want to call it. All right. So if I just stuff blink, I better check my sensors. My sensors are on. I can't put anything in front of it. The door won't open. Now I'm not sure what's going to happen. Piss. So you gotta be careful not to put crap in front of the sensors anymore. Does it just learn where to stop and start? I guess I'm going to try to open it. I don't know what that means. I think I need to uh, lift, lift up and latch it in.
Well, that's down. What's up? What's up? Now I have to move it down. You just hold this button here. It's program. I don't know. I don't see any guide on how to program this. It says is there get the guide to programming it. So you got to get her to go down. I was pushing this button that had positive and negative on it. Push that thing. Now oh, she's blinking. There we go. Now let's see if she comes all the way up. I'm just figuring this out as I go along. There we go. Trial and error. So now, I need to put my bulb covers on just to make her pretty. shorted and I could run a wire from this adapter that I'm using. 
I suppose. Free and clear. There's the antennae. Light off. Light down. Door down. I'm gonna go check the sensor. Well, there you go. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm happy. Now I gotta program the remotes. How many remotes do we have? One, huh? Thanks. phone can do it and my car can copy the code for this. Alright guys, well that's it. The genie door opener is in. Working and verified and all that, so we're all good. Oh yeah, I can see the sensor over there. I'm going to put my leg in the middle of it. Blink. Okay. I guess you don't want to see me program this remote. It's just a little fob, like so. You pull out the insulator and just slide the clip in. Oh. I guess I don't need to do nothing to it. What you can do with this one, it's programmable via uh, a cell phone app. So I can put the app on this one. All right, guys, I am not going to do that right now. God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time at Bob's Barn Workshop.